Hi guys. Hi guys, welcome back to another service of CPC Online. And I just wanted to make a quick disclaimer. We are all one family in one house, just worshipping God. Even though we can't be in the church premises, the Bible says that where two or three people are gathered, Amen. the presence of God is here. So I want you guys to join us in prayer. Let's just open our mouth and just thank God for what he's done for us. Amen. Amen. Father Lord, we just want to thank you for today. We thank you for the Thank you for our families, our friends, and everyone that's on this phone call right now, on this video right now. We thank you for those lives. We thank you for waking us up this morning. It is by your grace and by your mercy, Lord. There is no like you, God. We thank you. We lift up the hands as well. We thank you for our families. We thank you for everything you're about to do in our lives, Lord. We thank you for such a mighty God. We thank you for just being our protector. Such a guide for our friend, Lord. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you for your hard time, Lord. We thank you for your soul. There is no like you, God. There is a plan. We give to them. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want everyone to join us and pray for this world. As everyone knows, Corona is going around. We just want to lift up this prayer point unto God that if we repent to him, he's going to heal our land. So Father, this morning, this afternoon, together as a collective, we're just praying God, heal our land from any diseases in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Father, Lord, we just commit this soul in this land in your hand. We commit this land in your hand. Father, we repent for any sin that we have done as Jesus. Father, anyone that's healing from anything, anyone that's going through anything, Father, Father, we pray and commit this land in your hand, God. We pray that you would deliver us from any diseases, any pestilence, anything, God, from the enemy in the mind of the Lord. Cover our families with your hand, to cover our friends with your hand. Those who already have it, God, Father, we pray for the divine healing and the mind of the Lord. God, continue to be your ruler and to come together. Father, we put our lives in your hands, we pray for you, God. We pray that you will heal this land, God, for you are the only answer that we need, Father, you are the only answer. That we have touched the heart, and without you, we're able to not do anything. Bless, 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 also, I want us to just join in prayer and commit the service into our hands. Just because we're not in church, Amen. we're still a mighty church, we're still a powerful church. Amen. So everyone, wherever you are, just open up your mouth and commit the service Amen. into the hands of God. That it may touch someone that have never been to see this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, Lord, Father, we commit the service into your hands of God. Father, even though that we are online, Father, we pray for an impact on every single young person that's on this TV right now, that's on this phone right now, that's watching on Instagram. We pray that who else watches this, those may their life never be the same. So God, Father, we pray, God, there will be a healing, there will be a change, there will be a transformation in their lives. We come against any plans of the enemy, of God. We pray for the same encounter, the same experience, oh God, from in the church. Where will we are, the Bible says our presence are here, God. We pray for the presence of touch in our moment. We pray, oh God, that you touch us in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Amen. Father Lord, we thank you for everything you're about to do. We commit this service into your hands. We commit those that are watching at home into your hands. Anyone that's going through anything, Father, we pray for healing. Anyone that needs an answer from me, Father, we pray that you will give them an answer. And Father, we pray that you will touch this world, oh God, for you are the only answer that we have, oh Lord. Science cannot give us anything, but you, Lord, is the only answer that we need. So Father, we thank you for today, and we thank you, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Let's just go into a time of praise and worship. Amen. Continue just to worship the King of Kings. Just say something sweet Father, to Him. Father Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time. We may be at home right now if we're at home. We're not in the building. There's nobody around. It's a time for you to lift up your hands and give God praise. It's a time just to say thank you, Jesus. Father Lord Jesus, we're forgetting about anything right now. Wherever you are at home, we may not be in the church. We may not be with our brothers and sisters. Father Lord, we come to give you all the worship. We come to tell the devil that we will not be silent no matter what it is. He can never silence us, even though God knows. We may not be in that church building, but we are still in that church building because you've told us where two or three are gathered, you are there, Father Lord Jesus. So we're asking for you to visit us, Father Lord Jesus. We're asking to experience you in the same way, Father Lord. But we're telling the devil today that we will not be silent. So we're going to lift our voices. Hey, somebody raise your voice. Yeah. Give you all the praise, yes, we do, yes. Oh, yeah. Father, you're an awesome God. All the minds worship, yeah, he is my worship, he is my worship. All of my, all of my worship. Father, we
Lord, you are worthy, and no one can worship you for me. Oh, 
Somebody will tear down coming after me. If you believe it's safe, no shadow you won't lie low. Karma coming after me. It's not a war you won't break down. Guys, can you clap our hands unto the King of Kings? Amen. 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 All right, so we're going to go into a time of praise. Now, this song says, You Are My Joy. It's one of our favorites. And wherever you are, we really, really, really hope that you are praising God right now. So as we sing this song, we're telling the devil, Haha, you can't take my praise because we are joyful even in a time where we should be sorrowful. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh, 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 there's beauty in my brokenness I've got true love instead of pain There's freedom though you've captured me Yeah, and I've got joy instead of mourning There's beauty in my brokenness in my brokenness Instead of pain, there's freedom though you have me. me. And I've got joy. I've got joy. Hey, hey. Oh, there's beauty in my brokenness. I've got you love. Instead of pain. Though you captured me, though you captured me, and I've got joy. I've got joy instead of more. Hey, you give me, you give me joy. 
down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul, there's beauty in my brokenness. I've got you, love. Yeah. Instead of all this freedom, though you captured me, and I've got joy. Though you captured me, though you captured me, and I've got joy. Hey, you give me joy. Never been so free, caught in your love for me. He loves me. I've never been more secure, knowing your so all that he loves me. I've never been so free, caught in your love for me. He loves me. I've never been more secure, knowing your heart. I've never been so free, I've never been so caught in your love for me. I've never been more secure. I've never been more secure knowing your heart. Lord. I've never been so free. I've never been so caught in your love. In your love I've never been more secure. Been more, more secure. secure oh, oh, you heart, give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Jesus, we thank you for a time such as this. And as we move on, Father Lord, we just want to invite the one and only, our Papa, the Bishop Francis Sarpong. So the CPC welcome wherever you are. We want you to shout in your house, make the noise in your house. Wherever you are, stand on your feet, clap your hands as we welcome the one and only Bishop Francis Sarpong. as we are going to go into a time of listening to the word of God. Lift your hands with me and pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to bless you. We want to thank you because you are a good God. We magnify your name for giving us the opportunity to be alive for a time such as this. Be with us even as we listen to your word. Bless us in Jesus' name and let everybody say amen god bless you for tuning in i want to say thank you to the worship team and i also want you to know that we are all one family in one house <laughs> nobody has come from outside so uh, no social distancing as you 
you might say we're all one family in one house that's why you see us together but i want to share something for the next 30 minutes i want you to just text somebody just your friend that bishop is on i'm going to talk about some things that are very important for us to know even as we live in difficult times i'll be sharing on what i call the signs of the time the signs of the times now we living in times that people will want to know more about what is happening and uh, as i preached last week i spoke about um, dealing with fear that we don't have to panic because um, god is in control as the believer when we go through situations that are difficult we don't have to panic because god is in control then i also spoke about um, the fact that god has a word for every believer and in matthew chapter 24 it discusses the end of the times the signs of his coming but before that i spoke about the fact that the virus going on could be three reasons number one it could be an environmental factor maybe something might have happened to the environment and something has erupted and has uh, woken up um, the vi a virus that is terrorizing the whole world and i say it could be humanistic uh, or a human factor in the sense that it could be that somebody in the lab somewhere was manipulating some um, viruses and all of a sudden this virus came up um, it is something that Bill Gates, if you watch his um, lectures, said a couple of years ago that when we are getting to this century, um, what we have to fear is not nuclear war and, and all those kind of weapons um, that we used to fight, but we have to be afraid of a viral war, um, which somebody can just manipulate a virus and all of a sudden, it will have impact in the world. It could be something like that that is happening. Then I said the third reason that could be happening is what I call divine. And divine means that has God said something concerning all these things? Is there a biblical answer to these things? And that is where I come in. I'm not an environmentalist to talk about environment. I'm not a, uh, a scientist to talk about the human manipulation. I'm a preacher. And as a preacher, I believe that God created the world and anything that happens with the whole world's attention on it, God has something to say. And that one takes me to the book of Matthew chapter 24, um, which I call the signs of the times. I preach the same thing for the adult service. I know uh, my audience now are younger but wherever you are, I want you to pick a pen and a paper. I'll be just about 30 minutes, but it's very important, even as young as you are, it's very important that you pick a pen and a paper and write something down. Pick a pen and a paper and write something down because this is not going to be a hallelujah sermon. It's going to be a sermon that um, you need to write something down. You need to... Um, jot something on your phone on your paper or where you can refer to them because these teachings are very important if you're a christian you need to know them so that you can give answers when your friends ask you and um, what does the bible says concerning these things now i want you to open your bible with me to matthew chapter 24 verse 44 to 46 matthew chapter 24 verse 44 to 46 it says therefore you also be ready if you are listening to me wherever you are and if there's somebody near you tell them be ready they say therefore you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect therefore be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect who then is faithful and a wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due seasons. Blessed is the servant whom his master, when he comes, will find him so doing. This is going to be my main text, which I'll come 
to it at the end of the service. And what he says is that, therefore, ye also be ready. And, and tell your neighbor, be ready. Now, I'm looking at the whole of, for the next one month, we're going to look at the whole of Matthew chapter 24. Now, the book of Matthew chapter 24 is a very interesting book. And uh, the importance of us really learning it and writing notes down and understanding it is that um, people are going to talk about um, the virus as the end of the world. I even heard some and watched some videos where people are saying the virus is the Antichrist or the virus is the beast or the virus means Jesus is coming at the end of this month. Uh, some say the virus means Jesus is coming at the end of the world. Um, is that what the Bible is saying? Um, I, I think we have to look at the Bible and really understand what the Bible is saying so that we don't give people wrong messages um, that the virus means the end is coming um, uh, tomorrow and three months along the line the, there's no virus then people will be laughing at believers as giving wrong information what does the bible says and all of this can be found in the book of matthew chapter 24 i want you to be a very good student of the word so wherever you are text your friends tell them um, um, to, to watch online. And if you have family, sit, to, um, sit together and open your Bibles and let's listen to what God says. Now, the book of Matthew chapter 24, the whole of the uh, chapter 24 is a very important book. Quickly, I'm going to uh, mention some names, what it is called. They could be big names, but just forget about the big names, but for the sake of um, um, steady's sake, at least, you have to hear about it. It can be called an eschatology or an eschatological um, chapter. Eschatology means the end times teaching. So if you hear eschatology, it means it's the end time teaching. It can also be called an apocalypse. Apocalypse talks about the destruction of the world, like the virus is coming, destroying the world, killing so many people. So Matthew chapter 24 talks about the apocalypse the things that will come before the end of the world or before the world is destroyed. It can also be, there's another term for the book of Matthew chapter 24 called parousia. Parousia means coming. It means Jesus is, is coming. And others also refer to it as the Olivet Discourse. The Olivet Discourse just simply means that Jesus was on the Mount of Olives when the disciples came to him and asked him to tell him what are the signs of his coming. In a nutshell, Matthew chapter 24 talks about the signs of the times, the signs that will come for Jesus before Jesus comes. And um, we want to look at the whole of Matthew chapter 24. Today, we want to look at the overview of the book of Matthew chapter 24. In other words, I'm going to just take you through the whole of Matthew chapter 24 to the end within um, the next few minutes, uh, probably the next 20 minutes. What I want to do is to give you an overview of the whole book because the whole book um, was spoken by Jesus. So if you have a very good Bible uh, on your phone or in a, in a good book, you see that it's written red and anything that is written red means that Jesus spoke it. And the whole of chapter 24 means Jesus spoke it. Now, the reason why I want to have an overview with you today is the fact that people pick and choose what they want to say from different sessions of chapter 24. They will pick false prophets and say, because of false prophets, Jesus is coming. They will pick um, the pestilence and say, because of the disease, Jesus is coming. But I want us to look at exactly what Jesus said in the whole of Matthew chapter 24. I know that my audience are younger, but not um, too young to understand. They, they, they are not too young that they will not understand what I'm going to talk about. So number one, the book of the Matthew chapter 24 is divided into seven sections. Seven sections. The first session is what I call the destruction of the temple. Jesus himself came to the people in Matthew chapter 24 
and spoke about the destruction of the temple. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to him to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do not see all these things. Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. So over here, Jesus talks about the destruction of the temple. So before even he went into the size of the time, the first thing that Matthew chapter 24 talks about is the destruction of the temple. Now, there'll be a, uh, one of the days I'll just zoom on the destruction of the temple and to talk about its relevance to the end times, the destruction of the temple and its relevance to the end times. Because if you look at this text, the temple that Jesus was talking about was destroyed AD 70, 70 years after Jesus had gone um, by a, a Roman governor called Antiochus Epiphanes. And um, people use that to mean, okay, then Jesus is coming. Um, but other theologians believe that this temple will be rebuilt and destroyed again to signal that Jesus is coming. But if you look at this text, Jesus talking about the end times, talk about, um, uh, mention the destruction of the temple, which will mean that if you see the temple being destroyed, is the beginning of things to, to come. Then you look at verse 24 to 31, uh, verse Verse 24, chapter 3, sorry, chapter 24, verse 3 to 14, Jesus then goes into specific signs that these are things that will happen before I come. So over here, there are specific signs that Jesus spoke about. And um, uh, to read just some few now, as he sat on Mount Olives, that's why it's called the Olivet Discord, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, what will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So if you look at this, it's like three things. Jesus has spoken about the destruction of the temple. Then the disciples come and they are asking him, okay, Jesus, when will the temple be destroyed? Then they ask another question. When will the end come? And when will your coming? So it's like three questions they ask Jesus. So Jesus have to spend about 50 verses to really explain to them. And if we're going to understand the end times, whether as adults or younger people, we need to look at all these 50 verses before we really understand what Jesus is saying. So the first is he spoke about the destruction of the temple. And the second over here from verse 3 to 14, Jesus really spoke about the signs that will happen before he comes. This is something I'll deal with probably the second or third week. This whole teaching is going to take about one month, um, but in it, it talks about that many will come in his name. He talks about false prophets. He talks about wars. He talks about rumors of wars. He talks about earthquake. He talks about um, diseases, pestilence, and, and, and what we are seeing is a pestilence. So it's one of the signs, and you can pick that um, from verse 7. For nation will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there shall be famine, pestilence, that's virus, and earthquake in various places. So people will pick just that and say, ah, oh, there's a virus here, there's a pestilence. Pestilence simply means a disease without cure, uh, a killer disease, and what we are witnessing is a killer disease. But the fact that we have a killer disease, does it mean Jesus is coming tomorrow? The answer is no. But one of the things it means is that we are on the journey to meet Jesus. That one is sure. But it doesn't mean Jesus is coming tomorrow or is coming midnight. No. But it means that we are on a journey to meet Jesus. But I'll spend time to look at these signs in details. But the, here I just want to give you the overview. So verse 3 to 14, Jesus talks about specific sign. Number 3 is what Jesus talks about, abomination of desolation. Abomination of desolation. It's a very big term. 
Um, but if you look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Um, so what he's saying, the abomination of desolation in, in Matthew chapter 24, simply means abomination of depopulation of um, and some link it to when the temple was broken and defiled and then they were depopulated so it means that when you see Daniel prophesied that there will be uh, the depopulation of, of, of the people of Israel all over the place and when you see it it means that the end is one of the end time Sigmas. And we have seen the depopulation of the people of Israel after the defilement of the temple and, and, and the exile of the people of Israel. And, and, and we know that these are some of the signs pointing to the end of the age. So it's one of the things that Jesus also spoke about. And when you see these things, then know that the end is drawing near. Then you go to the fourth um, the fourth division of Matthew chapter 24, it talks about the great tribulation. It says that there will be great tribulation. Um, last time we were doing a Bible, tribulation means hardship. Um, hardship that will come mostly on, on believers. Um, it talks about the great tribulation. So what you know is that we might come to a period where believers will be hated. So if you look at, let's say, verse um, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been seen um, since the beginning of the world until this time, nor will ever shall be, unless those days are shortened. No flesh will be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So there is going to be a time whereby believers will be under attack, will be hated, if you read on. So this is another thing that I'll preach on one day. The great tribulation. What is it? How are we? Are we in the great tribulation? Are we now going into the great tribulation? Or are we in the great tribulation and it's going to escalate? We're having a Bible study and I was saying that we are in it in some form, um, but it's going to escalate. So I'll talk about the great tribulation. So over here, Jesus speaks about the great tribulation as a sign that is coming so if you see people hating uh, believers everywhere understand that it's one of the signs um i read a un report and it says that christians are one of the most persecuted people on earth now um you you might believe that is other um, religion but christians are very hated and and persecuted uh, you you call yourself a christian and people don't want to hear your name and all of that um, so the great tribulation is going to escalate, is going to increase to a point whereby if you mention that you are a Christian, groups are going to be against you um, for, for no reason. So Jesus also talks about the great tribulation. So it's also one of the signs pointing to his coming. So you can't just pick one thing and say, because of this, Jesus is coming. Jesus spent time to speak about the signs of the times. And over here, he speaks about the great tribulation tribulation if you look at the next division is what i call the real sign of his coming and uh, wherever you are when you say the real sign of his coming in matthew chapter 24 verse 29 to 31 is going to be the real sign of jesus coming over here you've got to understand that it's not a sign that you can miss now the COVID 19 is a prelude sign it's not the real sign so when I hear preachers uh, preaching about uh, that is the beast or because of that Jesus is coming, that's not what the scriptures is saying. Um, the COVID-19 is a disease, is a pestilence. It's in my second uh, outline, which is the signs of the age, the prelude. And Jesus himself said that these are not the end, but is the beginning. But when you get to this fifth division of the book of Matthew, is the real sign of Jesus coming. And, and, and I wish I'll be able to spend a little bit of time on this one, the real sign of Jesus coming. And these are signs that you cannot miss it. 
you can't miss the sign you can only see it everybody will see it says that immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened now when the sun becomes dark, the whole world will know it's like this a virus everybody knows it it's not like um some people will know it and others will not know it then he said and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken now these are not um preliminaries to the signs of his coming these are the real sign which means that when the day come the whole world will see it it says the sun will be darkened the whole sun will be darkened and i as a believer when i see the sun darken the whole world i'm not talking of eclipse i'm talking of real darkening of the sun and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven when stars begin to fall from heaven it's not a joke my brother it's not something that um, you can just uh, take it for a joke. It's not like this COVID-19 that they say stay home and still people are outside and joking, taking it as a holiday. No, 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 no. This real sign will not be a joke at all. The whole world will be shaking the powers and the glory. If at that time we have CNN, CNN will record it. If you have uh, Fox News, Fox News will record it. If you have Nigerian news, Nigerian news will record it. If you have Ghana news, Ghana news will record it. If you have British news, Sky news, everybody because you can escape it. Like if you look at the COVID-19 at this time, if you open the news everywhere, that's what everybody is talking about. This reason, that is what it's going to be. The whole world is going to know it. That's going to be the real sign that Jesus is coming back. And that one, nobody can escape it. Everybody will see it. That is why you need to prepare. Now, I was looking at, I was speaking to somebody and, and, and was saying that, well, when the real sign comes, we, we, we have videos of seeing some, um, 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 some figures in the atmosphere that people have recorded um, from other places. I said, no, 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 that is not a sign. This is, it could be somebody, computer, uh, manipulating uh, the sky and sending it. It could be something that has happened somewhere but that is not the real sign. This real sign, when it happened, everybody will know. You can't escape it. When stars are falling, my God, it's not something that um, you, you, you will not see. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Hallelujah. So Jesus will appear in heaven and everybody will see Jesus. So we're not joking. We're talking about real sign. And this one, everybody will see. Look at how COVID-19 has taken the attention of the world. And I want you to understand when Jesus appears in the atmosphere, he will take the attention of the whole world. That is why the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. At that time, whoever doesn't believe in those who castigate against him, those who say he's not there, they will know he is there. One of the things that I take from COVID-19 is that look at how just a small virus has crumbled the whole world. Now, can you imagine when Jesus appears in his glory? Every knee shall bow to him and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. It looks like I'm preaching um, this one, but it's just an intro. Mm. The real sign of his coming. Number six is what I call the lesson of the fig tree. I'll be ending uh, very soon. The lesson of the fig tree. So Jesus over here said, now they learn the parable from the fig tree when its branch has become tender and puts forth leaves. You know the summer is near. So Jesus, after saying about all of these things, then says that, look, you have to take notice. You have to learn from the fig tree. When you see these things, then you know that the end is coming. I'll talk about that. That is also a whole message that I'll preach about that one day, the lesson of the fig tree. Um, as we enter into the summer, when you see that the, 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 the rains are coming a little bit and the leaves are coming, then you know summer is appearing. That's what Jesus is, coming, is saying. So what Jesus is saying is that all of these things are like a, a, a wise person 
will say that summer is coming because the leaves of the trees are, are becoming a little bit greener. You know that when we go into winter, the trees become very brown, all the leaves fall down. But any wise person, when you see that the spring is coming and, and the leaves are getting green, you know that summer is, is coming. So I'll talk about that, the things that we have to know to learn from. This is an advice from Jesus to us. Then the last but not the least is what I call no one knows the day or the hour, the rapture. So over here, Jesus now comes and says in verse 36 to um, verse 36 to 51, uh, I read the first one, but the day and the hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. So if anybody used COVID-19 to say, ah, oh, because of that, Jesus is coming tomorrow, it's wrong. The day and the hour, nobody know. The, the month and, and all of that, I see people predicting that end of this month or end of next week or end of April. No, 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 no. Nobody knows that time. Nobody knows the day or the hour. I, I also spent time to really preach about this one, the day of the hour, no one knows. So what have I said in total? I've spoken about seven things. Uh, I've taken you through the book of Matthew chapter 24, an overview. Next week, we will go to the first one, the meaning of the destruction of the temple. And we look at the signs of the age, the, the signs that are like prelude to his coming. We've also looked at the abomination of desolation, uh, how the temple will be destroyed and defiled and people will be depopulated. The great tribulation, what believers will go through, Jesus spoke about that. The real sign where the moon will be darkened, Jesus spoke about that. The lesson of the fig tree, and also no one knows the day or the hour. So we don't know the day. We don't know when Jesus is going to come. But out of all this, as I end, uh, within the next uh, five minutes, there are four lessons that you have to take home. Four lessons. Four lessons that you have to take up. Number one, the signs are certain. The signs of his coming, they are certain. They are not suggestions. Jesus spoke about this 2,000 years ago. Now, if he said something and today we haven't seen any of it, then we will say, oh, Jesus didn't know what he's talking about. But everything he spoke about, um, they have come to pass. So the signs are certain. We are not joking um, scientifically and everything they are there the signs are there matthew chapter 24 and, and next two weeks we will look at the the the, the signs um, that jesus predicted number two jesus is coming is also certain his coming is certain uh i was saying that if you are going somewhere and somebody gives you direction uh somebody who really know the place and tells you that when you get to this junction there will be um, um a primark shop and from the Primark shop, when you go a little bit further, there'll be a McDonald's shop or there'll be a pizza shop or something like that. And from there, you see some uh, a big church building and then you arrive at your destination. If you sat on that road and you don't see any of these things, it means you are lost. It means the person didn't know what he was talking about or you are lost. But if you see the Primark shop, and you see the, the, the pizza hut, and you see the church, but then you know that you are nearing where you are going. And that is what it is. Jesus gave us signpost to his coming. And all of them have come to pass. So the coming of Jesus is certain. Number three, the day and the hour, nobody knows. We don't know. I can't tell you the day of the hour that Jesus is coming. I cannot tell you, but it will happen. And number four, preparedness is essential. Preparedness is essential. And that is my memory verse for today. Matthew chapter 24, verse 44 to 46. Therefore, you also be ready. Now look at your, if you are sitting by your brother or your sister, tell them, are you ready? Are you, he says, are, are you ready? therefore, be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour that you do not know. And I pray that this message will be a blessing to you. I pray that God will touch you. And the Bible says that if any man want to come after me, here I am, I've opened my hands. At this time, I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. 
If you want to accept him into your life, you can pray from your heart a very simple prayer. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and take control. If you pray this prayer, Jesus will come and live in your heart and your life will never be the same again. We will be on this same channel next week, same time as we continue to do our studies on the end times. Once again, give your life to Jesus. Stay home, save lives. God bless you.